hope you are doing well. It is always a pleasure to interact with you guys right here on the channel. If you are seeing my face for the first time, my name is Eva Mtali and um, on this channel we talk about international jobs, we talk about travel, we talk about working abroad, living abroad and studying abroad. So if any of those topics sound exciting to you, you want to make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and also hit the notification bell so that every single time we shoot a new video, you do not miss out. So um, as usual, how we do it here, when you come onto the video, please let me know where you are watching me from. Um, and also do say hello in the comment section below. Do give the video a thumbs up. It helps with the algorithms and it helps to push the video to a lot more people. And of course, it helps to motivate me. As you have seen in today's video, we are going to be talking about those uh, medical tests you expect to undergo when you are going to join a cruise ship. So I'm not a medical doctor, but um, this is based on my research as well as information that I have gotten from um, other people that work on cruise ships. Most of them are my friends, some are my clients. So yeah, you'll make sure you also do your own research and kindly note that these tests may vary from um, country to country. They may vary from person to person, but these are the general medical tests you will expect to undergo before you join a cruise. So without much further ado, the very first test you're gonna be expected to undertake. And, and guys, by the way, when you are um, taking this test, you don't just walk into any doctor. When the um, cruise ship company hires you, they will tell you where you're gonna go for your test. So for example, in Nairobi, I mean in Kenya, if you're gonna join a cruise and you're based in Kenya, if you go to the uh, maritime website, you can see a list of doctors that provide this test. I know there is one at the German Medical Center in Harper Hill, Nairobi, and so many others. I will leave a link in the description box at the bottom of this video, and you are able to go and check out the doctors. They charge differently um, from doctor to doctor, but generally uh, you're going to do the same test, and your test they will be sent. You will get a copy, but they will also send directly to your the cruise ship company that is hiring you. So the number one test you'll expect to do is a sexually transmitted diseases test, what we call STDs. So you're going to be tested for hepatitis, you're going to be tested for syphilis, you're going to be tested for HIV. Okay, and then the second test you should expect, this is for the ladies, you're going to undertake a pregnancy test. Number three medical test you should expect, especially if you're joining a ship, is they will do a urinary analysis. Um, where they're gonna be checking like your blood, they're gonna be checking your glucose, they're gonna be checking uh, your urine and the composition and all that medical stuff. I'm really not privy to that information. And then number four test you expect to do if you're joining a ship is um, a drug and alcohol test. So guys, I have said over and over again, when you're working on the ship, you are not allowed to have a certain level of alcohol content in your blood generally is more than a bottle of alcohol because in the event of an emergency every crew is expected to support in the rescue operation and you are almost it's impossible to do that when you are high so i would suggest if possible avoid all manner of alcohol drinks at least 72 hours or more if you can before your medical test because if they find excessive levels of alcohol in your blood it could be a deal breaker for you even though you have already passed the um the the, the interview for a medical i mean for a cruise ship and then the number five um test you should oh and then the drug test so of course they're going to be checking for things like marijuana they're going to be checking for pot they're going to be checking for all manner of heroin all those hard drugs they're going to be checking for that so you don't want to be found in bad so who needs to be having to deal with a drug um addict for example and you're working on a ship yeah i mean it's, it's too risky for everybody and then the number five test you should expect to do as a cruise ship employee is blood tests. Like that's you know they're gonna take like four to six vials and they're gonna test your blood for literally everything. A full blood test. They're gonna test the oxygen levels. They're gonna test the white blood cells levels. They're gonna test your 
um, red blood cells, they're gonna like test everything in your blood, yeah? And then the number six um, test you should expect to undertake medical test as somebody who's about to join a cruise ship or a cruise ship employee is a chest, they're gonna do a chest x-ray and mostly they're gonna be checking your lungs, how they're functioning, they're gonna check if you have um, tuberculosis, they're gonna check if you have asthma, they're gonna check if you have pneumonia, all those um, diseases, respiratory diseases that you expect to show themselves through your lungs, they're gonna check through that. And then number seven test you should expect if you're going to work on a cruise ship medical test is dental. They're gonna do a dental exam, full dental exam. So here they are checking for things like how healthy is your dental formula? Do you have any missing teeth? Do you have any cavities? Do you have any rotten teeth? Do you have any discolored teeth? Like they're basically just checking your entire um, dental formula. And this is gonna be very important depending on which role you are taking. There are some roles where it basically might not matter, but they don't want a situation whereby you get on a ship and then you have these chronic dental issues and might require the most sophisticated equipment and they'll just be wondering what do we do with this person here in the middle of the Mediterranean or in the middle of the Black Sea, what do we do? So they just want to make sure that you're really fit for the job. And then the other uh, medical test you should expect if you're going to be working on a cruise ship is a vaccination. They're going to make sure that your vaccinations are up to date. And then depending on your country of origin, you could be taken through other vaccinations or, and also depending on which country you're going to be uh, joining the ship from. So you could expect, for example, if you haven't done uh, something like yellow fever, they might ask you to do a yellow fever vaccination. Um, if you haven't done your COVID vaccinations they could ask you to do them if you haven't done like um, MMR they could ask you to do those as well and then number nine um, medical test you should expect if working on a cruise ship is your hearing so they're gonna check your hearing how well can you hear and also they're gonna do like um, an eye they call them optical examination you know like what they do for you if you go to the optician where they use like those two telescopes sometimes they would put like a visual chart and they close tell you to close your right eye and read or close your left eye and read so you're gonna do those and then um another medical test you should expect is uh, physical like they're gonna take your physical like the whole eva from head to toe so they could tell you for example to stand on one leg they could tell you to lift your hands up they could tell you to put them like this they could tell you to turn around they could tell you to do literally anything they're just checking your mobility and all that um, they're going to check your height, they're going to check your weight, they're going to check pretty much everything. And um, another test you should expect, if you're going to a medical test, you should expect if you're going to work on a cruise ship is allergy. So they're going to um, check what things are you allergic to, for example, food allergies and all manner of allergies. Because remember on the ship, you're going to be meeting like every sort of person on the ship. So they just want to make sure you are not, for example, allergic to peanut, let's say, for example, and you're going to be in the kitchen and they need to prepare a peanut dish, for example, or you're allergic to seafood and you're going to be a taster. I don't know. I'm just trying to imagine. So those are some of the medical tests you should expect to do on a cruise ship. Guys, I'm going to quickly check the comments and then i will end this video i hope the comments and the questions are either saying hi or asking me about the cruise ship if they are not about the cruise ship guys please allow me to not answer them because i'm gonna come back to do another video later on in the evening or maybe even right now because i need to be somewhere at around 6 30 so once i end this live i could go on another live i need to talk about canada there's a very important issue that just came up to my attention and i need to address it so guys if your question is related to canada i'm only going to answer questions people saying hi to me i'll say hi to them and i'm going to answer cruise ship jobs only on this live if you want to talk about canada or anything else please join me i will end this live and start another live almost immediately so join me there i will answer your questions um so james is saying hi valentine is saying hi mohammed is asking are you online now uh, james is still waiting for his visa i wish you all the best Krista is saying I don't reply to my emails. It depends on what you're asking me. If you're asking me things that I need to sit down like an immigration officer and answer, I'm not going to answer. Like, if you're telling me, I don't know, 
my husband has a PhD in aeronautical engineering. I have a PhD in nursing. Our son has a PhD in marketing. We want to come to Canada. What is the best pathway? Canada has more than 100 pathways. You do not expect me to sit down and start analyzing your situation, going through the 100. Those are things that require to be paid for, okay? Or maybe if you're a premier member, I could consider, but it depends on what you're asking me. If you're asking me things that are already, we have 725 videos on this channel alone. So you'll probably ask me something that is in the videos or you're asking me things that I need to sit down like an agent and do for you. You're basically trying to get free service for me for a service that you should either pay for or do for yourself, guys. That's why I may not be responding to you. But I will check. Uh, no, it depends. So, Krista, it depends what you're asking me. If you're asking me for answers, I will not respond. Um, Dabo is saying, hello, Eva Mtali, I want to apply for a Canada visa. I'm finding it difficult to have a bank statement. Really, how do I help you? Look for the money, yeah? <laughs> That's why I talk about cruise ship jobs. It's one way of making the money. So the challenge with most of you, you're so hell-bent on going to Canada that you do not even want to look at any other alternative. Right now, I'll give you an example. Um, when you go to Canada as a chef, you're probably going to be paid like, I don't know, 20 or $25 an hour, sometimes maybe less. You go as a chef on a cruise ship, you're going to make $3,000 upward. $3,000. And they're going to pay for your transport, they pay for your food, utility, accommodation, everything. So literally, if you go like as a chef on a cruise ship, you work for like six months, you're going to come out with $18,000 us dollars clean money minimum this is almost enough money for you to go and apply for express entry and shop proof of funds and go to canada so you guys you cannot come here and still tell me that you don't have a bank statement when i'm giving you alternatives and you don't want to take them up you don't expect me to give you a bank statement really <laughs> yeah it's unfortunate if you want to immigrate, you better have the money if you're lazy. If you don't have the money, have the discipline to do your research. You cannot be lazy and poor at the same time. Choose a struggle. We already say that. There's no shortcut to immigration. There's no shortcut. I'm sorry, it's painful, it's harsh, it's the truth. If you don't have the money to hire for somebody to do that for you, you better have the discipline, have the time. To do the research for yourself you can't be both poor and lazy at the same time no choose a struggle i'm sorry it's the only way yeah do your own research i have more than 700 videos here on this channel you can choose to go to the canadian government website you can choose to go wherever you want to check there's a lot of information guys you don't expect me to do all the spoon feeding um, my, my job here is to show you the possibilities and then you can go and do your own due diligence do your own research and see how you can bridge the gap yeah um boniface is saying hi eva thanks a lot for alison i'm doing a course that have loved since childhood Sing a jua come and see where we keep up oh thank you boniface this is the information i want to hear People who watch a video and take action. Don't just be sitting here watching videos and you are looking for an opportunity to complain. Every time I come online, it's your time to come and complain. No, we are not going to accept negative energy here. I want people to come, watch a video, go and take action, come back with testimonies. Thank you so much, Boniface. Uh, Zabron is saying, hi, how are you? You, Daya, I'm a Ugandan watching from Saudi Arabia. Thank you so much. Uh, Ale, one-on-one -on -one consultation. Krista, not now. And my fees are too high. You might, I mean, I'm going to charge you like $200 an hour. That's too high. I think it would be cheaper for you to do your own research. Um, Zabron, I'm not yet to get any response from Kushi. Can I apply? So this is a question I had addressed, Zabron. What you can do is when you're applying for cruise ship companies, don't apply for different roles in the same company. So for example, don't apply for waiter and chef, and sales, and barber, and IT, and all those things in the same cruise ship company. It is a sign of, what can I say, impatience, a sign of not being committed, a sign of not knowing what you want in life. So what when you apply for, let's say you've applied for, um, let's say it's Carnival, you can apply for an accountant, 
or an assistant accountant or a senior accountant. That makes sense because it's the same, um, what can I say, same expertise. But you can't apply, okay, you can, but it is going to work against you. Like a chef and then another job is admit an accountant and then a plumber and then an electrician. No, 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 it's a, it's a sign of non-commitment, yeah? It's like dating three different ladies. Just focus on one lady and let her know that you're the one I want and I'm going to give my all for you. Because if they get, I've seen cases where somebody, let's say, applies for um, a waiter position and they hire them as an assistant waiter or somebody applies for assistant waiter and they're hired as a waiter because you can be sure the team that is hiring a waiter is the same team that is going to be hiring an assistant waiter. So if they like your CV and there's an opening in the same line of um, category of job, then they will hire you. If you must um, do different in the same company, I advise you use a different email address. Yeah different because otherwise remember i talked about ats before your cv gets to a human being it goes through the ats which is applicant tracking system it's an ai tool that recruiters use to sieve out um resumes so you don't wanna you don't want the ats to block you because they've probably been told if you see even talia at gmail.com more than once just block it so you can try and use a different email address different picture different everything yeah but don't apply same company different jobs give it time and when you have applied if let's say they decline they always tell you like try back in like six months and sometimes the reason why you may not have had back is because remember the cruise ship companies have been hiring since last year sometime around september october november so a lot of people were applying and then sometime this year when we started making noise about these cruise ship companies that are hiring, a lot of people suddenly started hearing about these cruise ship companies. A lot of people, I mean, I've been doing interviews since last year, July, but most people, I don't know, for some reason, they thought it was a hoax or something. So people weren't applying for these jobs. And I stopped talking about them on YouTube and I've been talking about them on TikTok. And in TikTok, it's been crazy. Like, the people who have known me through TikTok, 90% have known me through the cruise ship jobs I've been talking about. So the people on, on TikTok took up the message, they ran with it, they applied, they got. So it's possible that you've probably applied for a position that a lot of people also applied for and the cruise ship companies have hired for. But don't worry, um, most of these companies hire on a rotational basis, so they'll eventually get to your CV. Um, and then there are so many companies, like don't try one company and keep quiet. Today I posted about an Italian cruise ship company that was hiring, you can check it out. Um, I've talked about um, Car uh, Carnival is coming back to Nairobi in July. Um, I know Royal Caribbean will be in Mombasa next week, but one, I think, from, is it 23rd and 24th? They'll be in Mombasa hiring. So guys, you just have to keep your eyes open. I know Ocean Me, Ocean.me are in uh, Dubai next week and I think Qatar. So you just have to keep your eyes open. Don't apply one company and keep quiet. Uh, um, Krista, I will check your case, but I'm not promising anything. Oliver is saying hi. Uh, okay when i find i'll get back to your i'll check your email yeah but most part that's the main that's the only reason i may not have responded it depends if your email requires a lot of thought and a lot of time from me i don't usually respond immediately because i don't want to just respond for the sake of responding i want to give you a solid answer so anyway thank you guys um it was a pleasure um wish you all the best with the cruise ship and as i said let's not have tunnel visions let's be open-minded it's always a winded path some people may be fortunate to apply for something in canada and they get it directly other people might have to go through dubai and then qatar and then oh so there's even in fact i should post that so there's one of my subscribers he used to watch me i think he was in qatar or dubai or somewhere i don't remember he actually went to three companies to land three countries to land where he is right now he's a chef in new zealand but he had to go through i don't know how many countries like just you know 
So guys, sometimes you have to be open-minded. I mean, you just never know. So I'm going to post, you check in the community post, you're going to see his testimonial. And um, I wish you guys all the best. I will see you on the next one. Bye, guys.